Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, April 11th, 2024. I'm one of your host, Blessing. Addy OA Jr. Joining me is LaCroix Poppy, Tim Mo, Morgan, Gettys. Plus, I'm feeling just so good. Sunday and Saturday, we had WrestleMania yep. and it just delivered. Yep. Then last night or two nights ago, whenever it was, we got X-Men yep. 97, episode five, oh. and it changed things for me. If y'all aren't keeping up or not watching X-Men 97 yet, you need to. And even if you're like, I don't know if it's for me or whatever, watch episode five. It is, it's phenomenal. It's so good. But also be cool in the chat. Don't spoil Be cool. Shit. No spoilers, everybody. I'm waiting for Alyssa to get back from her trip so we can watch it because she's this comes, the bigger X-Men head than I am. It comes back to what I've been talking about with the Fallout TV show. And I feel like I'm already a broken record even though I've only been talking about it for three days of like, I love the weekly releases. And I, I fall out. I wish there was a weekly release. I love that there's the Should weekly be. releases for X-Men 97. Granted, like, I think X-Men 97 as a whole has had its ups and downs. Like last week's episode, I wasn't as into. Really? I like the idea. Oh. Yeah, I thought the idea was there. Like, obviously, I like the idea, right? But I'm like, the execution wasn't fully there for me. The ex yeah, the execution. Last night's episode, whew, execution and idea. <laughs> all oh, there. Man. It was all there. there. And yeah, I like that we have a week where we get to sit with it oh, and talk about it. I love and it. Discuss it. I love it. It reminds me of the good times. Bless. Good times like Invincible season two being oh, over yeah. and we did a screencast about it. She, you can check that out. Will we do a screencast? Another one for X-Men 97? I hope. God, I wish we could talk about yeah. <laughs> this. That's, that's one of those ones. One, those, it's one of those ones where I wish we could talk about it, like week to week, right? Like on a show or something. But yeah, there's a lot, man. If we get there, let me know because I want to hop oh, yeah. on and, and talk about it. Speaking of t shows, though, that I want to talk to you about, are you going to watch Fallout? I am now sold that it means you're yeah. going to watch one episode of Fallout. I'm going to give it the shot, see if it grabs us. Um, I'm feeling really optimistic about it, though. Like the way everyone's talking about it, Mike mm -hmm. sounds like it got the stuff. And hey. I just love it. I love to see video game adaptations continue to succeed and kick ass and deliver to the fans and to people that just want to watch good TV shows or movies. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to give I don't want to hype overhype you for okay. it, but I just want to give a sprinkle of, sprinkle on me in that show. Right. Like it's it's post apocalypse. It's a lot of wacky stuff. It's stuff that I think you'd enjoy. But by the time I finished it, it had a hint of severance to it that I think you'd fuck with. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like that. Like, I don't, that's all I'm going to say. Great, like, there's great. like just some stuff there. Where I'm like, I'm getting like that severance feeling. It's exciting. Right? Like, so wait, the is, things I loved about it. Is Fallout out now? All of it's it, out it now. It came out last night? Yeah, the right? entire thing. Okay, all eight cool. episodes is out now. Cool. People talking about it. I, I saw chat talking They're about it before we even went live. And yeah, like, it seems like people are digging this thing. And Very I told cool. you, I've been telling y'all for, when did they announce this thing? A year, two years? I was like, yo, this is good. there's no way this could fail. There's I don't no know if I said fail. that. <laughs> I'll give you credit. But for I was it. definitely on the side of it. I was definitely like, no, I think this is gonna be good. Yeah. And I'm God, I'm glad it was good. I'm glad it was good. Hell yeah, I'm glad for you. Tim, mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about Fallout and a whole lot more because today's stories include Fallout 4 is getting a current gen update. Todd Howard says no to Elder Scrolls adaptations and more because this is kind of funny games daily. Each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and on podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do, support us with the kind of funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad free, watch us record them live, and get a daily exclusive show. For a chance to be a part of the show, submit your thoughts and opinions as YouTube Super Chats as we go. Housekeeping for you, our Invincible screencast review and Joker 2 trailer reactions are up on YouTube.com slash kind of funny. The Joker 2 trailer reaction is one that you definitely don't want to miss. Oh, yeah. That's must-see content. Must-see content. There's a major surprise yeah. that I guarantee at the very you, least, you won't see. <laughs> watch the first five minutes at the very yeah. least. It's, uh, it's required watching. I don't you. know if there's ever been a five minutes in kind of funny history that is more kind of funny than the first five minutes. Cause last night I uh, ended up watching the first five minutes of mm -hmm. our Joker two trailer reaction with Gia just to show her what happened. And she's like, wait, is this how it really happened? I'm like, yeah, every part of this yep. is how it happened. Yep. Including the very, very intro. You'd love to see it. Everyone go check it out. Uh, a new X cast is up breaking down the big update coming to destiny. That's on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. And then tomorrow Nick's Pokemon nuzlocke stream is finally happening youtube.com slash kind of funny games and on twitch i'm excited for this one you missed a part i did i did i deleted the whole thing well, and i added it um pika thank you pika i keep deleting the p i deleted it yesterday too <laughs> <laughs> or no two days ago whenever i hosted last i was like i'm not saying this pika I, shit. i know that i hype things up a lot when they're good and i'm telling you what everyone is working on for this pokemon stream tomorrow mm -hmm. it's worth hyping yeah like Dude. it is about to be an event y'all are not ready then, for andy cortez remind, reminds me who he is yes yeah. like, where he's like he's so talented he calls me to his desk and shows me a thing and i'm like 
What the fuck? What <laughs> the actual What fuck? the fuck? Like, yeah, listen, we have ready. a crazy roster in this office. Y'all Andy Cortez is talented. He, he's a fucking wizard. It's so cool to see what he's working on. And then, like, on, like, a... A very different track. It's it was interesting to come into the uh, the office this morning to see them uh, maybe working on some stuff uh, on the Covenant. Mike Roger side. front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go check that out. Uh, all that juice is saying Kevin is alcoholic. Professor Oak. No, his name. Please respect him. He's Professor Hardwood. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. Professor Hardwood. I love that. Mm-hmm. It falls in line. <laughs> Um, I was talking. I think was it you I was talking to about like how I'm in a Pokemon mood or I've yes. been in a Pokemon mood lately, mm-hmm. and like some apparently. Well, yesterday Mike hollered at me from like over his desk. He's like, "Hey, bless. Uh, the streets are saying that you should check out Coromon or something like that. Um, it's like an indie game that is like mm-hmm. basically a Pokemon style okay, game." Yeah. And I was like, "I played a little bit of Cor- Coromon. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's my, my, uh, getting me my jam." But I've been thinking about it more and more, and I'm like, "There's generations of Pokemon that I missed." Yeah, because I played mm-hmm. all the way up until uh gen 3 i played the gba pokemons and then like i never got a ds or a 3ds and so i skipped like those handhelds well of pokemon i mean here's and the i thing. hop back in with pokemon sword or pokemon um, yeah let's go pikachu i guess yeah 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 here's the thing it, uh, honestly i think you only have two options if you were uh-huh. like really going to commit to this one of them is are you a big boy that wants to experience something new or is the other that you're just in the mood for some Pokemon and you want what you know you're going to fucking love? Mm-hmm. Because if you want what you know you're going to love, the only answer is Soul Silver and Heart Gold on the DS. Mm, it is the remake. I didn't even think about that. It's the remake Fuck. of Gold and Silver. And it, because it's Gold and Silver, it gets you the Kanto region as well. Yeah. So it's like, it's... It's back. It's just perfect. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Maybe my favorite sprite work in all of Pokemon. Like I, There's a lot in that game that I think you'd love. The answer, if you want to be like, you know what? I want a new adventure. I want to try something new. And I want to not recognize any of these little fuckers. Mm-hmm. The answer is black and white. Mm. Black and white. And then black and white, too. You don't need to get there. But that definitely, I would say, is one of the best experiences. And from the gens that you missed out on and for what I think you're looking for, I feel like that would be the answer. See, I really like those as suggestions, the way you put them. Because I was considering, one... Pokemon X and Y no. leading into Pokemon Legends Zaw. Nah. That's coming out that. next year. Yeah. Right? Like as a, as a primer for that. And then also I was thinking Pokemon Legends Arceus. Mm-hmm. Just based off of like, you know, I really like Scarlet and Violet despite oh, all the, despite all the issues. It's the easiest yeah. to play because it's on Switch already. But again, listen, I have a Steam Deck. And I'm not going to play these games on my Steam Deck, but allegedly I could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, like, allegedly maybe, maybe I could. Maybe I have a 2DS XL and maybe I can give you a Ooh, Pokemon that'd be pretty y. cool. A yeah. Very good Pokemon game. It is. So basically, it I is. just meant, so basically, what I'm saying is that every Pokemon is on the table. Just listen to all four, four of yeah. these things. Well, there's, I mean, well, Sun and Moon is. There's a lot of these motherfuckers, dude. Oh yeah, I forgot about Sun and yeah, Moon. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, but no, I would say, I'd say Black and White or um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Heart Gold and Soul Silver is a really good suggestion. Then just do it because dude. I do. I mean, that's my. You're, but I, mean, I, but I think I do want something new though. I think yeah. to, to to what you're talking about, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I know is a slam dunk for me because I. Gems one and two are were my childhood. Yep. Like I know every single single one of those Pokemon. It's like mm-hmm. you know I that's just re- return to form for me. But yeah, I do like the idea of like, yeah. Let me let me. I'm down to find some new Pokemon. I'm down to like explore a new region. Black and white was the first time that they were like, here's 150, and they're all new. Mm. Where it wasn't just like oh we're at it we're at it. It's like yeah. they wanted you to have a new experience, and it takes place in America, so it's a little different. Oh uh, yeah. It's kind of like a different vibe. <sighs> let me sit and think with it. Yeah, man. I'll consider it more. But also. Thank you to our Patreon producers for considering us. Uh, Carl Jacobs, Karen Hovisapian, and Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Factor, Dragon's Dogma 2, and Robin Hood. But we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. <laughs> it's time for some news. We have five stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one, Fallout 4's long-awaited next-gen update finally has a release date. This is from Wesley Yenpool at IGN. Hot on the heels of the release of the well-received Fallout TV show, Bethesda has finally announced a release date for the long-awaited Fallout 4 next-gen update. The free upgrade for the post-apocalyptic open-world role-playing game launches April 25th on Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 and includes native applications for the consoles, performance mode, and quality mode settings, as well as stability improvements and fixes. This means the game will be playable to up to 
60 frames per, per second and with an increased resolution. Elsewhere, Fallout 4 and play on or Fallout 4 on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One also gets a free update uh, with stability improvements, login, and quest, quest fixes. Bethesda said in a blog post. And finally, a free Fallout 4 update for PC adds widescreen and ultra widescreen support, as well as fixes to Creation Kit and a variety of quest updates. Players with PC versions of Fallout 4 on Steam, Microsoft Store, and GOG will receive stability mods, or sorry, stability mods and bug fixes, Bethesda said. Fallout 4 will also be sold on the Epic Game Store and will be Steam Deck verified. Let's go! Kind of fantastic news all around. Like, we've been talking about this a lot. Like, I love how much Xbox invests in making its old games new again. This is a great example. Um, and on one hand, it's like, wow, how did it take this long? Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, hey, they kind of did every single thing you could want from this, right? Including the Steam Deck verified. Like, I love that uh, Xbox has talked about the Play Anywhere stuff for a very long time. And it it's really kind of living the words, right? Like, they are making sure that their games are playable in the best way possible in as many places as possible. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm glad that this is happening. Right? Is, like you said, it's a conversation that we've been ha having a lot on the Fallout uh, TV show review Gamescast. The second half of our conversation was dedicated to what the fuck, like why, it, like it sucks that there's not a modern Fallout thing to say to to play. That said, right, like I think this is great. I still would have loved a Fallout Three remake or Fallout New Vegas remake or something that felt even more modern, like Fallout Four came out nine years ago which sounds wild Don't say that yeah what? no it sounds wild when i say it, it came it came out in 2015 like november 2015 yeah. same day as rise of the tomb raider <laughs> it yeah. came out that game is oh, old wow. and like this might be more of a debatable thing right but i think even when you played that game at the time parts of it still felt old even then so i look at fallout 4 as one in i would even go as far as to say fallout 4 not even like a fan favorite right like it's one of those ones where i think it makes sense as a, all right, we have a Fallout TV show. What do we want to do to give people something to buy or something to play or something to immediately go to after they finish watching the show? I guess like maybe a week or so after, a couple weeks after they finish the show. Fallout 4, I think, makes the most sense for the least work. Hey, let's remaster it. Let's fix some bugs. Let's give it an update. Let's it's also the most recent one. If you're not counting for 76. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, like I think it makes sense for all those things, but I still wish it was like a... Either like I fall out five, I understand. I mm. understand a million reasons why it's not that. But man, like I wish either 76 was just a way better jumping in point for people, or I wish that, yeah, we could have gotten a new Vegas or a Fallout 3 remake here. But I still think this is a really good move. I think this, this is an awesome thing. This might not be a question you can answer, but if somebody knows the answer out there, have they already done this for Fallout 3 and for New Vegas and for those older ones, or is this the first? one of the fallout games to get this type of love like a remaster no, not or, a remaster but like the just this uh next gen update stuff fallout new vegas has like xbox boosted stuff yeah and so like all the stuff we talk about in terms of like when you play an old like when people would play dishonored and it's fps boosted i don't know the exact bullet points of fallout new vegas i don't know if it's fps boosted or like what the exact things are but it definitely has certain things where it's if you're playing it on xbox series x it feels better than if you're playing it on xbox 360 back in the day um and for me i think that still is going to be my go-to i've been talking to andy about and i think mike about like all right we want we want more fallout after watching the show what do we want to do and uh, for me i am going to play or I would like to play New Vegas. I can't. I can't predict the future right now in terms of video games because, yeah. listen, review season Things is back, baby. Man. Um, but if I'm gonna hop into a Fallout game right now, I think it's gonna be New Vegas. Greg's been talking about maybe doing a, a Fallout 76 stream for like a week, and I'm like, ah, you know, I tried. I tried Fallout 76 um, a few years ago. Like we tried to jump back into it, and it just didn't hit for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, like I think for the people that either haven't played Fallout 4. I think if you, one, if you haven't played Fallout 4, it's a great option for you, especially now with these remastered um, and like update stuff that they're doing. Uh, but then also, if you're somebody that is, all right, I would look, I would like to return to a Fallout th thing, and I really have to choose. I, th I think Fallout 4 is not a bad option, right? Fallout 4 is a great video game. Fallout 4 is the most modern version of a traditional Fallout game. I think it makes sense, but I think it's still a thing of. I think you're split if you're a Fallout fan of what, you, what you're, what you're going to do. I think 3 and New Vegas are still going to be some of the prime options for you. This conversation is fascinating because a year ago we talked about Last of Us and how the show came out and then we saw the incredibly boosted numbers for The Last of Us. Uh, the Witcher, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, where The Witcher 3 was like selling, like sales spiked on um, all the different charts. I wonder what this is going to do for Fallout. I feel like Fallout is a, a little bit different where Witcher had Witcher 3. 
right? I don't think people were necessarily going in, in droves to Witcher 1 and 2. No. Um, Last of Us was, it's just The Last of Us and then Last of Us 2. Uh, but with Fallout, there being so so many different games and like the spinoffs and some of the spinoffs, correct me if I'm wrong, are the most beloved of the franchise. Like New Vegas seems to be Oh, New Vegas is, the yeah, one. the fan favorite. I wonder what it's going to do and I wonder what, specifically because of things like Game Pass being, I, I feel like, such a great way for people to try out these games um and to 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 get them buy them play them whatever you words you want to use i wonder how xbox is going to spin the headline of fallout oh it's for players sure are up yeah or, you if, know what i mean? think it, i see i that's a good question because i think most people are going to probably hop into four it being the most recent like I, even though i say it came out nine years ago that's the same year as witcher 3 yeah and witcher 3 yeah. did get those boosts did get all that stuff so if you're putting out a modern or a um current gen update or current gen version that people can come in and buy and like be like okay cool this is the way that i should play fallout right now i think fallout 4 will be the one that sees most of the like jump in terms of numbers and you, you, uh, playership and stuff i do think that new vegas specifically is going to see that too i this is a kind of funny.com slash you're wrong fallout 3 is that one that you can play through xbox currently like if i have an xbox series x can i play fallout 3 on that or like is there a yeah. boost yeah. options? Yeah. Oh, with the boost stuff? I mean, yeah, it must be, right? Because like, uh, Someone in chat earlier was saying both 3 and New three Vegas and New Vegas, 60 frames per second. Yeah. Great. I think if I had to put it in order in terms of which ones are going to see like that usership, I'm going to say 4, New Vegas, 3 in that order. And I, I'm just curious on what the differential is in that number. Like, is, is it like, oh, yeah, 5% more people are playing New Vegas, whereas 400% more people are playing Fallout 4? I'm, I'm smelling a pizza bit. Is this a pizza bit? No, I, I just am... Uh, I, really do, I really don't know. Like, ch So check this out. Mm -hmm. Last of Us didn't have a release at the time of the, the show coming out. Last of Us Remastered came out later. No, it didn't. It, uh, Last of Us Remastered? Last of Us Remastered came out came the fall before. before. Okay. Last of Us okay. 2 Remastered yeah. came out this okay. last January. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And I think they did say a lot of people came through for Last of Us Remastered. Yeah, okay, so forget what I was saying there, but still following the, the logic I'm trying to get to. Yeah. It, is there a chance that a Fallout New Vegas remaster, remake, something or other gets announced at Summer <sighs> Game Fest? And I I, when hope. I say is there a chance, like, is there a team that could be working on that? Or is everybody booked up? I mean, in terms of a remaster, I... If it's just a remaster, I think maybe there could be a small team at Bethesda working on it. The, I think the thing is with it, there has been no rumblings really, and there's not maybe another you're wrong thing. We were, I was looking this up as we were having the conversations these last couple of days, and I couldn't find any sort of report or like anybody saying that anybody's working on a Fallout Three or New Vegas, which makes me think that it's not happening. I feel like that's something that would have came out. So because it's I think obsidian. it'd be smart. It's Obsidian, right? That made that New Vegas. New, that made New Vegas. Yeah. But I don't I I think it would be on Bethesda. Yeah. And like the way that Bethesda operates in talks, I feel like not in talks. The, the, the way that Bethesda moves, I don't know if they fuck with New Vegas that much. <laughs> I think they look at New Vegas as like a, oh, but that wasn't us. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're Fallout 3, we're Fallout 4. Like those are the ones that we prop up. Even while I remember watching the like um the no clip documentary on Bethesda where they're talking about Fallout and stuff, and it felt like a Oh yeah, we're not we're not gonna talk much about New Vegas. <laughs> like New Vegas is a cool thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, let's talk about Fallout Three and Four, though. Uh, no spoilers, clearly, obviously. I'm asking this just as somebody that does not know Fallout at all. Yeah, are the games worlds connected? Yeah, it's all the same universe. Okay, and then in in the show, is the show's like the show takes place in the game universe. But is is this the location in the show one of the game's locations? No. Or, uh, it's, so it's a new location, but in the same world. Yes. Very it, cool. It technically is because I believe Fallout 1 and 2 were in California. Oh, one I, of the yeah, original I wasn't Fallout one was in California. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the closest, like in the modern Bethesda era, the closest we would get the to closest is like would be New Vegas, Vegas which, again, which I think maybe could lead people to go, oh, yeah, like what, Southwest? Maybe I'm maybe I want to stay in this region. I don't know if people yeah. are gonna think that deeply about it, but I think New Vegas has like the closest connection. I mean, Vegas is just cool. The idea Vegas of an apocalyptic dope. Vegas is like exciting. I and think. New Vegas takes advantage of that from the things yeah. I've seen. And so 
I think New Vegas is going to get a bit of a resurgence. I think Fallout 4 is going to get the biggest resurgence because yep. that's the one that they're use, uh, propping up in this way. I think it'd be dope to remaster New Vegas, but even people in chat were like, yeah, it doesn't feel like Bethesda really acknowledges New Vegas that much. So I don't know if they would give that treatment. I think Fallout 3 would be the one if you're going to go and remake something or remaster something, you do that. I think at that point, though, don't even remaster it. Remake Fallout 3. Yeah. I talk, I've, I've talked about this for a while that the fact that the next mainline Fallout game, we're going to get what? In over a decade, where <laughs> like the next Bethesda game coming off of Starfield, which just dropped, is Elder Scrolls. I don't expect that to get that until maybe five years from now. And then we're talking about Fallout after that. And these are games that take long development cycles. I think we're a very long ways from a Fallout. And we're gonna be in our forties, bless. I'm yeah, like I'll likely be forty by the time I play Fallout Five, which which breaks my heart because I fucking love Fallout. Um, you think even with the success of the show and and all of that, like who's gonna make it? I don't think Bethesda. Won I, there was a news report we talked about weeks ago where it's like I think Bethesda are the arbiters of, of Fallout. I think it would have to take phil spencer busting in the door and being like todd we're giving this to somebody else you guys don't get to hoard fallout and i don't think they want to do that i think they they look up to bethesda and todd howard and that team with too much respect and they don't want to like piss people off and yeah. I, I i i think if that wasn't the case then yeah i think but obsidian for sure would be the ones making it but um to my point about how long how long away we are from a new fallout entry i think the easiest way to give some uh, give the people something to hold them over until the next one is a fallout 3 full remake we're making Fallout 3, but it looks as good as a Starfield. And I say that loosely because I know people, a lot of people are like, oh, Starfield doesn't look good. But like, you get what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. look like a modern Bethesda video game. I think that's what you do. That, that's going to take a lot of work. But I think maybe remaking Fallout 3 would be an easier task than a ground up Fallout 5. We're going to put an entire big team on, or our full Bethesda Game Studios team on this. Got it. But yeah, I'm excited for the future yeah. of Bethesda. Um, and speaking of which, Tim. Story number two, Todd Howard keeps saying no to Elder Scrolls movie and TV adaptations. Uh, this is from Alex Stedman at IGN. As video game adaptations continue to ramp up in recent years, Bethesda Game Studios is finally getting its first with Fallout, Prime Video's high-profile TV series that debuted last night. And unsurprisingly, it's not something that Bethesda bo uh, boss Todd Howard took lightly. Quote, this is something that I said no to for like a decade, Howard says. Everyone wanted to make a Fallout TV show or a movie, and I was like, nah, I wasn't really feeling it, end quote. <laughs> Again, up, and this, Todd, goes back, this goes back to what I just said with Todd Howard. Todd, I think, is like, if you nah, tell him, not hey, feeling it. let somebody else work on Fallout, he's like, nah, man, <laughs> fuck that. We're the Fallout guys. We're going to make Fallout ourselves. So um, I didn't got the chance to catch up with, with Howard on the red carpet of Fallout's premiere in Las Vegas. Or sorry, Los Angeles. Now I got Vegas <laughs> on the mind. Uh, in Los Angeles earlier this week. We only had a few minutes with Howard, who also served as an executive producer on the TV show. But that was still enough to pick his brain a bit about what convinced him to finally adapt Fallout and the chance of other Bethesda properties getting similar treatment. For Fallout, it was all about finding the right creative partners. Quote, I met Jonah... Jonathan Nolan, uh, and I love his work, The Dark Knight, Interstellar, Person of Interest, and then Westworld. And he and I kind of hit it off, Howard told IGN's Benjamin Watts on the carpet. Quote, and I felt like, hey, do you want to do this? I'd like to approach it uh, like it's another entry in the games. Like, let's do a new location, new story, uh, and let him and his crazy lunatic people he works with kind of do uh, what they do. And we're really happy uh, with how it turned out, end quote. So, with those encouraging signs, does Howard think of uh, does Howard think other Bethesda properties will be getting the adaptation treatment? "Quote: I don't know. There's nothing in the works," he says. Uh, everybody asks like about Elder Scrolls, and I keep saying no. Also, and I would approach those. Eh, I'll probably say no. You never. <laughs> you know, I don't know why I added the "eh" in there. I, I love. This. It's because I watched the clip, so yeah, I know the exact you know way how you said to it. Say it. <laughs> uh, you never know if someone's gonna click, but I think this really came out of we think things are gonna. Uh, we think things are aligning to do a high quality job. It wasn't forced. It was kind of a natural relationship. Hey, this sounds really cool. As opposed to we should have a show, right? It never came from that. End quote. Quote, I can't predict, predict the future, Howard says, but this has been one of those most, this has been one of the most enjoyable projects I've ever done, and we're just kind of over the moon. Everybody in the studio, uh, everybody in the studio was seeing it that way, I guess, was seeing it that way, end quote. You can't really ask for more than what was just said there, right? Mm -hmm. When the, the results are as good as they are. Like, this is all lip service until they can back it up, and they backed it up. Like, y'all seem to really be into the Fallout show, and him saying, like, we didn't think, oh, we need a show, so let's make it. It's like, the things aligned to make the show right. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like Last of Us is a similar situation, too, where 
there was talks of movies, talks about a whole bunch of things. And it wasn't until they're like, hey, like, we have Craig Mazin. We could do this yep. right. And then they did. And I just think that that's very, very cool Dude, to see. If you have um, if you have Jonathan Nolan at your disposal, you make that show, yeah. right? Like, if Todd, if Todd Howard, I imagine, like, building that relationship with Jonathan Nolan, who he calls Jonah, which I didn't know he was like Jonah. I need, I need to meet more Jonas. I don't meet enough Jonas in real life. Hmm. You know? I don't think I've ever met a Jonah. I, I've met one Jonah who, like, was a childhood friend. Wow. And I'm shocked there's not Did more. Did you get along with Addison? No, I don't. They didn't know each other. Mm. They definitely didn't know each other. Different crews, you know, different yeah, schools. Of course. Yeah. Jonah, I believe. Well, actually, I won't dox the school. Anyway. <laughs> um, but no, like, yeah, I think you have Jonathan Nolan and you go, fuck yeah, we're going to make a follow TV show with Jonathan Nolan. He just made Westworld. Like, yeah, yeah we're going to do that. And yeah, for Last list for uh, Neil Druckmann, I think you Normal. find Craig, Mo Craig Mason as a partner and go, fuck yeah, we're going to do that. And Elder Scrolls TV show, I think, is a fascinating idea. Tim, for you, coming off the success of, of Fallout and knowing the popularity of Elder Scrolls, do you think it's a missed opportunity not to be doing an Elder Scrolls adaptation? No, like, that's the thing is, like, missed opportunities, it would only be a missed opportunity if I knew more information about what the opportunity was of the, this person plus this person or this group and this group and this IP and we're going to do this in this way. All those things need to add up, right? And I feel like there's the missed opportunity. But uh, we were talking yesterday even about Sifu and it's like, we got the um, uh, John Wick team working on Sifu. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes that makes sense like you can put that together you see exactly what it could be and you know that they're going to put the right attention into every element that needs it the correct way um i look at something like elder scrolls and on one hand i'm like that'd be really easy to to get right mm -hmm. on the other hand it's like there's a million ways to get that wrong you know yeah. um i i feel like the fantasy stuff is very 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 overdone and i feel like to stand out in that world on streaming tv services in particular like you need to do something pretty is there pretty special coming off of game of thrones ending years and years ago at this point i know there's like the new game of thrones stuff and then there's also the lord of the rings show that's happening on, on amazon mm -hmm. yeah rings of power are there any is there any other like say if we're talking about tv specifically well, are there, witcher, is there anything right? oh yeah there is witcher yeah yeah and like um there's just like i feel like a lot of things like that and um then there's ones that just kind of missed the mark like uh what was it the the the, the watch of time <laughs> oh i know called. what you're talking about but did that miss <laughs> the, the wheel mark? of time am i thinking of the right thing the wheel of time maybe i'm not i'm thinking of something wheel of else. time was the thing that, that, that was supposed to be the next big thing and then it just kind of wasn't um uh, okay but Anyways, I, I feel like Elder Scrolls can 1,000% work. Uh, it makes sense. Like, it's a, it's a world that people clearly love and mm -hmm. want to see uh, in, in different media. Dude, would, an Elder Scrolls TV show or movie would pop the fuck off. Yeah, but you it would the right people. To on your it. point, it has to be good though, right? Like I think back to the World of Warcraft movie that I, I would say the same uh, the same thing with in terms of like popularity mm -hmm. and like I feel like that came and went. Like it was good, it seems like, but it's not like the next. I would, I would push back against the uh, Elder Scrolls uh, being like a guaranteed pop-off thing because outside of like the Bethesda magic of how you're able to interact with that world, what is it about Elder Scrolls as a fantasy setting that stands out amongst other fantasy property, right? Whereas Fallout, even though it's an apocalyptic setting amongst a bunch of other ap apocalyptic IP, it does have like its own specific vibe that does still stand out. I feel know? that. Yeah, I guess for me, I'm thinking of more so just the IP power of it. Like I'm somebody who admittedly, I'm fantasy is not my bag compared to like yeah. loving post-apocalypse, but I look at how the way that people talk about Lord of the Rings in terms of like movies and, and novels, I guess, or whatever, right? Or like how people talk about Game of Thrones as a television show. Elder Scrolls is that for video games, right? Like, if you're talking about the fantasy video games that dominate the space, is Elder Scrolls and probably Dragon Age being the other one. And I think that would, like, the popularity of Elder Scrolls, I think, would translate easily in terms of, oh, yeah, like, I, all the Elder Scrolls people I know that play the game are going to watch this fucking show. And that's a lot of people. Like, yeah, I think totally. you have that power on your side already. The next big step is just, can you create a compelling story? Yeah, and and, and Barrett, to, to answer your question, or at least attempt to, and I, I agree with you, the, the point that you're making. I just and, and I'm not saying that, like, the totally. right creatives couldn't make something like really fucking cool um but yeah I, I just think i think the leg up that elder scrolls does have is obviously the, the fan base and all that but i i think that what separates it potentially from other fantasy things is it does have enough like iconography that is like even if you don't play the games like me i know that it has a theme song i know its theme song like mm -hmm. i can hear it in my head i know the fusro da i know the mask like helmet thing that the dude has like i feel like 
the fact that it even has those things, those touch points that me as a non-fan knows, I think that that already gives it a leg up uh, over it, other things that are just like, we got dwarves and, and dragons. I don't even know if they have dwarves. I do think it would have to be maybe a Skyrim-specific adaptation because I think that's what people know. Yeah. If you did an adaptation of Oblivion, <laughs> I'm going to watch that. I should be like, I don't know any of this shit, right? But like you when all the stuff you talked about, Skyrim, right? Fusro doll, like all the dra- well, Again, I'm not going to get deep into it because I'm going to definitely mistake some, of this, mistake some of these things. But like all the stuff I know of Elder Scrolls is based off of all the shit I know of Skyrim. And I do think that shit would hit, right? Yeah. Give it the winter setting. Give it the thing of like the main character is the Dragonborn or like maybe you're going after the Dragonborn or something like that. And I think yeah. you, got so- you got something there with it. I think it might be more of a challenge to do something that is a new Elder Scrolls setting or story or whatever it is. But I do think that the buy-in is already there. And there's identity there in terms of what Elder Scrolls is that would bring people in. It is just about like, could you make a? Can you make a good story with it? Like, I, for me, it's the thing of what we get with The Witcher versus what we get with the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Where I think The Witcher is a slam dunk as a Netflix show because there are characters there. There's a specific story there. It is Geralt. It is uh, like the characters that surround him. It's him being the uh, the Witcher. It's him doing those things. like, which that makes so much sense for. Oh, we can make a story out of this, right? People know what this is. Dungeons and Dragons, the movie had to kind of like play around with, oh yeah, we're a movie that <laughs> happens to be in the Dungeons and Dragons world, which gives them a lot to work with in terms of, hey, we can tell our own story, we can do our own crazy stuff, but we have to make these references that actually make it Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I think Elder Scrolls would have to lean that round in terms of, what are the rules that makes this an Elder Scrolls <laughs> world thing? Nick, what is, what is up? What are you here? The Dungeons and Dragons movie <laughs> was perfect. That was a perfect film. And there, I mean, listen, you're right. It's a fucking fantastic it's exactly film. what it needed to be. It's stupid. It's <laughs> dumb. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And Michelle Rodriguez rocks. There you go. You're already here. Nick, do you want to talk about? I thought you were coming here to talk about Pokemon. And you're uh, yeah, I thought you are going to get mad that Bless changed your copy. He doesn't want to say Pika. I didn't want to say Pika. Hey, the Pika. What's wrong with you? It's why just, are you dead inside? Listen, I'll say it with me. Why ready? is your copy so long? That's what I want to know. Mike it's said, like two paragraphs long. Mike said, you got to sell it. And I said, oh, okay, cool. Well, we'll put some copy on the Kind of Funny Games daily audience. And those guys are always, they're always business, right? Mm. You guys are always business-minded here. Who's that? Where? Oh, oh everyone, look at ones and zeros. Todd Howard, Elden Ring, Elder Scrolls, all the scrolls. I get it, guys. We're going to have some fun tomorrow. Noon. I'm playing my first Pokemon. Pokemon Red Fire, Fire, Fire Red mm-hmm. for the first time. <laughs> Pokemon and guess Red what? Fire. It's a Nuzlocke. Someone said maybe that's a headlock. Maybe it's not a headlock. I don't know what's going on. We got some crazy shenanigans for everyone. Nuggets will be had. At some point, I'm getting more Starbucks. Tune in tomorrow, noon. Go watch the, the Dungeons & Dragons movie tonight. Michelle Rodriguez for the win. She was great in that movie. That was a great... Have you seen the Dungeons & Dragons yet. I need to. I know I'm going. It's pretty good. But yeah, like I think Elder Scrolls would have to lean that way. Not even in like the comedy way, because I, I, I think the comedy worked for the Dungeons & Dragons movie. I don't think people want that out of an Elder Scrolls Can thing. Can you imagine? <laughs> I think people would be livid if they yeah. went that direction with it. Um, but I think you had to play off of all right, this is a world. What is the unique story we're telling here? And I think that might even be more of a challenge uh, for Elder Scrolls compared to Witcher having the connective tissue being Geralt and the characters that we know. Absolutely. Yeah. And Henry Cavill. But Henry that's Cavill. the thing. You just need a Henry Cavill. I got to figure it out, everybody. God, I'll love that. I also think, again, coming off of uh, Fallout, a Fallout show versus an Elder Scrolls show, what Barrett's talking about in terms of like, how unique Fallout is as an IP, I think works so well with it. We want to talk about how expensive or how, I guess, much production needs to go into convincing you of a world. Mm-hmm. I talked about this on the Fallout review that I think the biggest hurdle for me watching the show, at least in the first three episodes, was going into Fallout after watching both Dune 2 and Shogun. Dune 2 and Shogun are both pieces of media that bring you into that world, and it is hey, this is the fucking world, right? Yeah. Like, you are living Art in, Sh- in Shogun. You are, yeah, you are living in Dune 2. Like, we are playing by the rules of this world. Fallout is like, yo, we're being goofy as fuck. Like, it is... I was thinking about this in the first three episodes, right? That, like, these people... Like, Fallout is supposed to be this post-apocalypse from people that, like, you know, are living in the style of world that is based off of 19, what, 50s America. But... The main characters in Fallout, they look like they've seen Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, they got the feeling of, you've been on Twitter before. <laughs> like, the main character of Fallout, I'm like, you know what social media is. Like, you've seen modern things. Do you get what I mean? Like, is that Plus, crazy? Every once in a while, you say something <laughs> that 
<laughs> like I love Fallout the TV show. Yeah. But like you don't give me 1950s sometimes yeah. with like who these characters are, and that's yeah. okay because yeah. once my brain kind of configured to it of listen, it's fun, it's wacky, it's Fallout. Mm-hmm. I bought into the world and I enjoy it for what it is. Elder Scrolls though, if you're gonna make an Elder Scrolls show, I think you have to go the way of Dune or Shogun, where it is. All right, we're y'all got to. You were getting serious, and y'all gotta sell me the fuck on this world. We can't yeah. be goofy with the CG, like we can't be goofy with the sets and like the like. You have to nail it. Yeah. Plus, sometimes you say really unhinged things, but I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one. I like. Yeah. It. Right. Yeah, that's great. I, I thank you. I kept thinking about this, and I didn't know what it was that bothered me. But yeah, by episode three, I'm like, nah. Like you just seem like you've I'm, clicked a hashtag before. I, I'm, I'm blanking on it. You name. seem like you got on a TikTok binge. Bruno before. Mars looks like he's from the 1950s. You know, like there are certain people where you're like, damn. Jonathan Major. I thought Majors. you were saying that Bruno Mars was in. <laughs> Ball, and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my no. god. But yeah, no, no, you're right. I, I feel what you're saying. Hold on. What are you bringing up Jonathan Majors? Jonathan, Jonathan Majors is a man that time traveled from the 1970s. Are you just saying, what? Look, have you seen any picture of Jonathan Majors? Yeah. Have you seen the hats he be wearing? Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at the way Jonathan Majors dresses and tell me he wasn't teleported here from a different time. He looks like when I take a picture of him, it should come out in black and white. <laughs> Victor Timely, you yeah. know? I, I mean, that's why he's the perfect point. cast for that. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad he had to be a shithead. <laughs> God damn. Oh, oh man. Bless. Let me tell you about story number three. But before I tell you about that, let me tell you about patreon.com slash kind of funny and youtube.com slash kind of funny games where you can go and get the show ad free by getting the kind of funny membership. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been so thankful for Factor since we've been in the new studio, and you can too. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Head to factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 and use code kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code kindoffunny50 at factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. This episode is brought to you by Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is the highly anticipated action RPG successor to the cult classic Dragon's Dogma, released in 2012. Dragon's Dogma 2 boasts a richly detailed and deeply explorable fantasy world created using immersive physics, character AI, and the latest in graphics from Capcom's RE Engine. This single-player action RPG challenges players to use their creativity and curiosity to shape their own experience. The world of Dragon's Dogma 2 revolves around choice. Both your party of pawns and enemies alike will react dynamically to your actions on the battlefield, whether you cling to the backs of monsters or seek to dispatch them from afar. Whether you like melee combat, shooting bows and spells, scaling enormous monsters, or using your environment to your advantage, Dragon's Dogma 2 has something for you. And the character creator is easy to use with a ton of customizability to get as creative as you want. So go to dragonsdogma.com to buy the game and start Start your epic quest today. This episode's brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com boost. 
Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. And we're back. And Tim, I got some super chats for super you. Super chat me up. Mellow Fellow <laughs> gives us a super chat and says, play Pokemon Infinite Fusions. It goes through Gen 1 and 2 gems, and you're able to fuse any two Pokemon from most generations with custom sprites. Shit's wild. I don't know if you've seen this. Not, I've seen, I guess I've seen fusions. Some of the fusions so they, are just straight up nightmare material. So they make it into Persona where you like fucking kill them to make a new one? That's fucked up. Or Digimon Adventure 2. Tim, yeah, was, but then they still have their own their personalities, own, yeah. and then they separate from so like in in, per, uh, in persona, that shit's permanent. That's wild. I don't like that. I was uh, talked to you before the show about. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to dinner with friends last night. We went to BJ's. It was Hell to celebrate yeah, Eid. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, you we're having Zuki, dude. I guess they they have like you can order three Pazuki trio. Yeah, Pazuki trio. Oh, yeah. We got two Pazuki trios. Whoa, Let me tell whoa. you, <laughs> it was four of us. Let me tell you, the sal salted caramel Pazuki. One of the best things I've ever put in my body. Hell <laughs> like, yeah, man. Fucking great. So proud. Fantastic. Also had um like they call it deep dish. It is not deep dish. It's just a choice style pizza. But they have a pepperoni pizza there that's pretty good. But I'm mad they call it a deep dish. It's deep dish. No. BJ's deep dish? BJ's deep dish is the choice style pizza. Deep dish is more like it's like a casserole. Ah. <laughs> uh, like I mean, a real yeah. Chicago deep dish pizza is like you gotta eat it with a fork and knife. Yeah. You can't yeah, just yeah. pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, BJ's is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Barry's brought it up. Brought it up. That's that's well, the, the right, choice. Like, yeah, when you have like that, that I don't know, man. It's deep dish, bro. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. You start bringing in Chicago, you start bringing in like regional shit. Then I'm like, all right. But yeah, like Chicago deep dish is deep dish. Like that's the core of what deep dish is. Anyway, during that dinner, we were talking about Pokemon, um, and I think it was Yusuf that was like, oh yeah, like recently I did like what's your favorite pokemon as like a um like icebreaker question with the group and like it was a hit like mm -hmm. that's one that you got, got to bring to it and then my friend sarah was like oh i'll like one up you on that like what is who was the pokemon that most represents you mm. like what pokemon do you relate to the most or like what pokemon do you identify with the most mm -hmm. and i what thought about that pokemon are you are you loyal and true why did pokemon have so many bangers just fucking bangers it's bro. so it's crazy how many good though the, the jojo journey song oh God. So you want to be a master? Pokemon! Do you got the skills to be number one? Oh, we got to have like Orange a listening Island, session man. sometime. Yeah, we, we got to just <laughs> do, do a stream. We got to honestly just sit here. Pokemon and Digimon, though. Oh, like the Digimon movie soundtrack? Digimon does have some bangers, Yeah, too. dude. But we just got to put on the To Be A Master soundtrack and just hit play and just sit here and yeah. just see what it does to us. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't want to see who I become. What, so what Pokemon represents you? I, I didn't feel good about this answer, but mm -hmm. I, I, it, it is one of my favorite Pokemons. And when I said it, I think one person at the table was like, yeah, I can see that. I said Charmeleon. I fuck with Charmeleon. Plus, that is the saddest thing you could ever say. What? I love Charmeleon. Are you kidding me? Charmeleon is the coolest Pokemon ever. He's badass. He's all. He's more red than Charmander. <laughs> he's more sharp. Like the and he has his arms out. Like yeah, he's about to fight he's like, you. Come he's like when he's like Timothy Chalamet when he went into that room of ten thousand people and was like, none of you motherfuckers have fought with me. Like choosing Charmeleon as a Pokemon that represents you is like saying that Michael Sarah is no. your favorite actor. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no. that's another it's... conversation we had last night too. Actually, yeah, yeah it, I'm sure we were talking about like, <laughs> if you could go back and fix one movie, what would you fix? And I was like, I'll do you one better. If you can go back and ruin one one movie, what would you do? And I said, I'll replace Will Smith with Michael Sarah in Seven Pounds. <laughs> 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 and I got laughter. Let me tell you, when I'm on fire, I'm on fire with the jokes. Yeah, I was on fire last night. Yeah, I felt I, I drove home feeling good. I was like, I made the homies laugh today. I love it. I love it, man. What Pokemon are you? I, I don't know. I there's definitely none that jump to mind that like represents the type of smarmy asshole I am. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> chat, what what Pokemon is Tim yeah, Gettys? Let us know. I feel like chat might have something. Yeah, and also someone, what Pokemon someone... do you think I am? Uh I'll do one more super chat, then we can uh, tackle the rest later. Uh C CJ Splitson says, Will Fallout Five be Todd Howard's last game? I'll do you one better. Will Todd Howard make it to Fallout Five? Yeah, I don't think so. Like how I should stop asking how old people are. But how old is Todd Howard? Like how many know. years does Todd Howard le have left in this industry? As you start working, because he's into, made a lot of video games. Yeah, and then now there's TV shows being made and other properties. I feel like like we're gonna start seeing a lot of the 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 more 
luminary names that we know uh, diversify the projects they're working on. We've already seen it with Druckmann. We've seen it with Miyamoto. I feel like Todd Howard is on that list as well. Clearly, all of those men love making video games, so I don't True. think they're going to ever fully go away from it. But in terms of like, yo, he is like the director, yeah. you know, especially like, you know, he's make, he's working on Indiana Jones right now. That seems like a dream project for him. Like, I feel like if I'm in Todd Howard's shoes, I am focused on, all right, what are my dreams now? Mm -hmm. You know, I've like, I've carried a company on my back, right? I've put in, I put out Elder Scrolls. I put out Fallouts. Like I made these big franchises, like people associate with, with these things. Now I have the leeway to work on a TV show and executive roost. I have the leeway to make an Indiana Jones thing. And I'm the biggest Indiana Jones fan there is. If I'm Todd Howard at this point, I'm just going on side quests. Yeah, dude. You know, like, are you, I think for, by the time we get to Fallout 5, for him, it might be a thing of, all right, let's let somebody else take the reins. I'm going to be either a consulting role or like just an additional producer on the project. I'm not going to be the guy. Yeah, totally. But yeah, I would think, I think the question is, is this next Elder, Elder Scrolls, the last one for Todd Howard? Or like, what does he see as his goal either post game making or I guess like post directing everything, yeah, you know, does totally. he just start to take a smaller role in things or consulting or what it, wh whatever it is. Tim, let's move on to story number three. Also, I saw somebody said that uh, you're far fetched. How do you feel? You about know that? what? I kind of like that. Far fetched is a cool Pokemon. Far pretty dope. I like oft forgotten, but pretty dope. How do you feel about Pidgeotto? Pidgeotto is my favorite. One of my favorite Pokemon ever. I can see you being I've a told Pidgeotto. you the story a million times, but uh, like, I'm not kidding when I say there was, not one time, more than one time, that I've went to uh, Supercuts and I've shown them when they ask me what I want my hair to look like, I've shown them a picture of Pidgeotto. That's so fucking funny. Because like I show my I show my barber a picture of uh, Nas on King's Disease too. Awesome. awesome. And I love the fact that like you show up with Pidgeotto. And you're like this is what I want. Yeah. It's insane. Uh -huh. It's an insane thing to uh -huh. do. Dope Story spot, number three. Bro. EA shoots uh, shoots down Dead Space Two remake rumors. This is Cat Bailey at IGN. EA has denied reports that a Dead Space 2 remake was in development before being canceled, with a spokesperson telling IGN, quote, we don't normally comment on rumors, but there is no validity to the story, end quote. EA's comments follow reports from Jeff Grubb, who claimed that EA Motive was working on concepts for Dead Space 2, but that it was ultimately shelved due to lackluster sales of the previous release. However, IGN understands that EA Motive never, cons never considered a Dead Space 2 remake. In an article on Bloomberg, reporter Jason Schreier confirmed EA's statement while adding that EA Motive did spend a few months, quote, conceiving ideas for a new entry in the series, but that none were greenlit and fizzled before they could get very far, in part because the Dead Space remake reportedly missed internal targets. The team then in instead began exploring other ideas, quote, while a bulk of developers who worked on Dead Space moved on to different projects. In a, in a post on X slash Twitter, he added that, uh, quote, the chief hope was for a new game, not a remake of Dead Space 2, although both ideas were explored. Ultimately, he says, Dead Space is on ice once again, which IGN can corroborate. <laughs> it's a lot of ice in that game. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, have you been keeping up with all the hubbub around this? Yesterday? I have, and God, it, it's one of those things that um, I have a headache from eye rolling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just hate, I hate this type of shit where it's just like, Things feel weirdly subtweety. And it's like, hey, we could just not do mm -hmm. that, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's the for me, I'm like, cool. Well, we're in, we're still in the same place as we were yesterday in terms of yeah. we're not getting more dead space. What constitutes as in development or in like mm -hmm. what constitutes as considered or whatever, like the semant semantics be kicking people's asses sometimes yeah. on the internet. And I get it, right? Like words mean things, but also it's like, all right, cool. We're in the same place. EA considered doing it. I'm sure even without the reports or without the rumors, we could have assumed that EA thought about Dead Space 2. But we're still in the same place as far as knowing Dead Space 2, not happening. In fact, yeah. new Dead Space projects in general seem like they're not happening at the time being. Which saddens me because I know there's a Dead Space fan base out there that'd be yeah, ravenous for that. Totally. And here's the thing. I'm so happy with what we got last year. Dead Space Remake was phenomenal like what a video game. And I'm so happy that it exists and that it's as good as it is because it took a modern classic and like made sure that it's going to remain a modern classic forever because mm -hmm. it took uh, a game that was fantastic but had a couple little problems and it fixed those problems it's great yeah you know and i feel like um there's probably going to be a return to dead space at some point in the future and i've said this a whole bunch of times in the last like two years or so like i don't know that dead space two and three are the moves like i feel like from this point it is do something new in that world um after nailing the remake of one and i it sounds like from what we're getting here we might not get that project anytime soon but the team is working on something new 
And it's exciting that it could be a new IP. A new, a new Battlefield. Be, doesn't Oh, well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> God damn it. We're getting, we're getting Iron Man. Hopefully yeah. we get Iron Man. I really pray to God. <laughs> I will, please give me Iron Man. God damn it. Make it good, please. <laughs> God, an Iron Man game could be so good. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Story number four. Immortals of AVM Studio seemingly furloughs the majority of its studio. This is Jeffrey Russo at GamesIndustry.biz. Immortals of Avium maker Ascendant Studios has reportedly furloughed most of its staff. As reported by Eurogamer, a former employee took to social media to share details about the matter. The number of those affected is unknown, but it suggested 30 people may have been impacted. News of the furloughs comes seven months after the studio laid off about 45% of its staff. The decision was reportedly due to low, low, low sales of its title, Immortals of Avium. According to Polygon, 40 staffers were affected by the layoffs at the time. Uh, back in April 2023, Ascendant Studios employed more than 100 people. Hate to see it. Definition of furlough, suspension or discharge of a worker or workers on account of economic conditions or shortage of work, especially when temporary. Yeah. So it's just interesting. Like, why are you saying that and not just laid off? Not just laying off. Closed or like, what's going on? I mean, I think it's the idea of like, actually, I have no idea. I don't know how business works, (laughs) but maybe it is a, hey, we 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 already laid off this amount of people and maybe we're like, ah, but we might need these people later. So we'll furlough them. So maybe we can get them back. Maybe Sucks, somebody, man. if you're in your wrong, if you're a CEO, want to let us know why it, you for a loan instead of fire. It's it's uh it's definitely rough, and this is unfortunate. I hate that we keep talking about these stories, and I also hate and I keep saying this, but like these studios that are, that are trying to do something new, trying to do something in AAA that's smaller and different, and um I I want to see that succeed, and I just feel like it's almost getting to the point that like they're getting like cut off at the knees before they can even like start walking yeah. uh, to get to that point. And, and that's a bummer, but shout out to EA for trying with the mortals, right? Like that is yeah. such a refreshing thing. And it's funny to say, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, Oh, it was a generic first person shooter or whatever. And like Marvel bullshit. It's like, well, it wasn't Marvel though. Like it was a new IP and it was a, a, a new IP that looked big and looked like they were really trying they tried something. And, like doing something there. Right. Like, yeah. Sucks. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm going to say something very obvious, but ideas are hard, right? Like coming up with something new, coming up with something fresh, especially if you're a new studio coming up with a new IP, that shit is difficult. And when we get to, when we get that first trailer of Immortals of Avium and I watch it, I'm like, oh, like this seems, not, this, this doesn't stick out to me. This doesn't like grab me. Like, and I think a lot of that comes down to what the main ideas are of it, right? They're, they're doing like the first person, it's a magic first person shooter, where the bullets that come out are from your hands, and but it's like spells and stuff. And I don't know if that hits the same way if, if I'm just playing a traditional first-person shooter with a gun, but you have an idea and you want to try something. And I think you kind of have to try it out to see that it's not a great thing, right? Like, like people aren't taking, taking to it in that way. But like, you know, in a world where Immortals of Avium ends up succeeding, maybe we have a new idea there where it is, oh yeah, we should try some of these things out in in more games, whether it be the way they approach the magic system, maybe it be maybe the way they approach world building or cutscenes or characters or the like, actors that are in the games. Right? Like I, I, I think the fact that they tried and the fact that they tried to do something different and unique, I commend them for a million times. The fact that it didn't do as well as they wanted and, and it, you know, I think for all intents and purposes was a failure of a pro- project, I think sucks and I hate to see it. And that, uh, it's just how like the dice rolls sometimes, though. Yeah, man. And so, yeah, it just gets scary to look at all these other teams that are popping up that are trying to make, or we imagine, are going to make similar level games and uh, the challenges that they face. And I just, I really hope that uh, we start seeing some different outcomes to this. Even looking at things like Judas, with, yeah. with Ken Levine, which I feel like we're. Uh, but that's the thing is with Judas, I I see those ideas, I hear those ideas, and I'm like, they'll sell like some good ideas, uh-huh. <laughs> right? Like from the offset, talking about, I know not roguelite isn't everybody's thing, mm-hmm. but when you watch the the the, I guess not previews, but the breakdowns from IGN and Skill Up or whoever, I listen I listen to the, like all that shit, and I'm like, this sounds like such a good ass video game. Immortals from the get go, I was it sounded fine. I don't, I wasn't part of the reactions when we did the Game Awards reactions when they announced Immortals, but I. It very much felt when I looked at the timeline, I didn't I didn't see anybody list like Immortals is my top three announcements from this thing. Yeah. You know, whereas Judas seems like it has a good head on its shoulders. Even something like Callisto Protocol, I think, had a lot of the ideas there, but the execution was iffy, right? And so yeah. it comes out and it kinda like, you know, did you hear that? I did hear people. I thought I was going crazy. I, I hit the wrong button in Slack, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, like I think it's I hate giving like traditionally like capitalistic statements, but 
it's the marketplace of ideas, right? Like the best ideas are going to hopefully rise above and end up being the things that become successful. And hopefully that's going to lead to more good shit. I think that it, that also comes with just the expectations and comparisons that are, you're never going to get away from. And you're putting out Callisto protocol. You're going to have it be compared to dead space. Yeah. And I think in the case of Callisto specifically, it was especially compared to dead space because dead space remake was coming out right around it yep. uh with judas it's like you're going to compare it to bioshock and i feel like that is um on one hand unfair but on the other hand it's like entirely fair like that's what the expectations are and what people um are looking at the project and and wanting to experience and they see the ideas and they're applying the ideas and how good they are to the experience of what they know from uh the previous work but it's a different team with different budget, different mm -hmm. resources. But you look at something like Kojima, and granted, got the resources from PlayStation to make it all happen. But got a lot of resources. Death Stranding worked, man. Like that's that and, you, is, and you want to talk about ideas? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Death Stranding was, was the most out there in terms of its ideas. But yeah, like it worked, and I like that it worked because I think there are things that a lot of other people can take from Death Stranding, whether it be hey, let's get let's get out there with our story, or hey let's make some games where we deliver mail, right? Like, yeah. I'm sure there are plenty of things that you can look at Death Stranding and go, oh, that's a lesson that we should learn. I think that's a good thing. But Tim, these are a lot of big stories we just talked about. If I wanted something smaller, say the tiniest news I needed to know about, where would I go? You'd go to the Wii News Channel, the place that has all the smallest news that you need to know about. Story number five, it's time for Wii News. Are you ordering sneakers? <laughs> uh, my brother just sent me... The, the in four minutes shoes I wanted dropping and I didn't know that so yeah I'm in uh, panic mode everybody listen do your damn thing story number five we got Wii news for you Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs is coming to Xbox PlayStation Nintendo Switch and PC on May 9th EA is increasing the price for EA Play uh, the monthly price is going to go from $5 to $6 annual is going from $30 to $40 Pro month is going from 15 to 17, and then pro annual is going from $100 to $120. Chia is coming to Chia. Nintendo Switch on June 27th. Avatar Elements kicks off tomorrow in Fortnite. The Big Con and Town of Salem 2 will be free on Epic Games Store from April 18th through to the 25th. And then I got a link that Barrett dropped. I not clicked the link. I'm clicking the link right now. John Cena put up an Instagram image of just an eight, the 8-bit eight Link model from The Legend of Zelda? <laughs> Dude, he be doing weird ass shit, man. His Instagram is bizarre but like why it none of it makes sense is this like it's is he it, promoting ricky stanicki right now he's, <laughs> he's went on record to just be like yeah just when i think things are funny i just post them or if i'm thinking about something i just post have it. you seen his only fans no i on twitter i keep seeing links to john cena just dropping only i don't know if he still yeah. is but it's him in character as ricky stanicki being like oh man i'm we can see some big old things over yeah. in this link over here and i'm not clicked the link of I, mean, I, I did i tried looking at his only fans but you couldn't see him i couldn't see it Boo. i just wanted to put into the minds everybody of uh john cena's link no oh my god can you imagine <laughs> i you would see me with a like a picket sign outside of nintendo <laughs> being like justice justice for this Zelda movie why i love john cena man <laughs> also listen i love john cena too but as link come on man uh or as zelda now so, we're talking oh now we're talking or ganondorf it's Beetle. Think about that think about that for a second yeah, just to bring it back to avatar uh El the event in fortnite coming on right now like this is not gonna get me back into fortnite but seeing this, this looks really like, cool fuck man this looks fun for a really damn. good avatar game Hell yeah. John Cena has Tingle, the chat saying. Yo. But like, that's so unserious. Tingle. That's so unserious. Tingle might be the I most mean, unserious character to ever live. Yeah, but like, at that point, we're making a priority film. Tingle but has at that to be, point, I'm kind of sold. Like, unironically, make Michael Sarah Tingle. <laughs> like, let's be real. This man. Well, look, at this real. look at these two people next yes. to each other. How did you even it find makes, this? I, know. I don't know. I just looked at John Cena <laughs> Tingle just to see if anybody had photoshopped it. Someone said, the, the tweet, I would like to petition for, I bet saying him to be Tingle. Yeah, oh, yeah. There, there we go. go. That's Skips really funny. Skips on to something. I'm going to read this. Skip. Real good. That's it for kindoffunny.com. No. That's it for Wii News. <laughs> now it's time for the Super Chat section where you write in with your Super Chats and we talk about them on the show. Uh, Optimus Prime says, I don't think Elder Scrolls 6 will take as long. One continuous map, already familiar with Creation 2, etc. The scope is way smaller than Starfield, I'd say 2027. I mean, 2027 would be dope. 
if we get it by then. Yeah. I do. The scope thing is interesting because sure, you're exploring you're exploring planets and Starfield versus like a a map in Skyrim or like in Elder Scrolls, right? But I think when you're making Elder Scrolls. There's a lot, I don't want to say more because I think that's going to discount how much handcrafting there was in Starfield. Across all these different planets, obviously, like, there's so much handcrafted content in Starfield. But you're filling in the space with procedural generation and all this stuff and, you know, relying on players to craft and pick up um, resources and do all these other things that aren't core RPG gameplay. Elder Scrolls, that's an RPG map, right? You are handcrafting that entire thing. You are creating something that has to be connected and has yeah. to feel like a... That's an open. That's your traditional open world RPG, and I, I, I don't. It's hard to compare it to Starfield because Starfield's doing a way different thing. But I don't know if I would say that it's not as ambitious or not as like the scope isn't as big as a Starfield. I'll mm. still put it up there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, DJ Kento says Skyrim is a bigger brand name than Elder Scrolls. I disagree with that. Really, I think that's right. No, I think that's completely correct. It's Elder Scrolls, like the whole the whole name of the thing is Elder Scrolls Sky Skyrim. Yeah, but no. But b that. before Elder Scrolls Six got announced, the whole like question was like, do they just call it Skyrim Two? Because I think Skyrim has more of a name rec recognition for. I think Skyrim is the mo is obviously the most popular Elder Scrolls game, but if they make an Elder Scrolls TV show or movie, unless it is a specific, no, oh, this is a Skyrim thing, which is very likely. I you call it Elder Scrolls whatever maybe you just call it elder scrolls i mean i don't necessarily disagree with that but i i i'm with barrett that i think skyrim is like definitely the most popular brand that they have there and like sure. and I, I feel like that's where the conversations would start i mean barrett brings up like the search things i mean yeah well like, i don't know i still i would still say i don't think it's a problem if you're naming something Elder Scrolls and you're leaving Skyrim out of it. I honestly, I, if they it's made a show. We shortened Sky, it's because we shortened Elder Scrolls 5 to Skyrim. We call it that. If, we're gonna, if you're going to Google uh, like an Elder Scrolls thing, or if you're going to Google Skyrim thing, you're not going to type out Elder Scrolls 5 colon Skyrim. So I don't think the Google thing is a good yeah. parameter. I, I feel like if they did a show, they'd call it Skyrim Tales from the Elder Scrolls or some bullshit like that. An Elder Scrolls adventure. Yeah. Two Elden, two Scrolls. I think as long as you have Elder Scrolls in the title, you're fine. Uh, we got another one from... Oh, we got a lot of them in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, we got Granny Num Nums who says, Blessing, did you see Xavier Woods on the latest Um Actually? I saw the cast, and I desperately need to watch that episode. Yeah, I've it looks seen fucking clips. great. Um, Lemon Boy says, Unemployment runs out this week. Afraid where money for my mortgage was uh, going to come from. But two job offers today after being laid off for three months. Th thank God. I know. Lemon Boy. I was about to be like, don't give us $5. Yeah. <laughs> no, that'd be that. Dude, congrats. I was, about, I was about to yell at you, but congrats Amazing. on the two job offers. Ooh, my heart dropped. Ooh. I was like, man, do not be giving us $5 if your employment was running out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, congratulations. DJ Kento says new live action R rated TMNT movie based on Last Ronin was announced today. Is that game still happening too? I don't think we ever see that game. And if we do see the game, I have zero faith it's going to be good. That's just. Damn. <laughs> yeah, zero I mean, faith. just think about everybody that's related to it right now. It's, I mean, yeah. Embrace, dude. Come on, man. You're not right. You're not nah. wrong Did you about see that. the other announcement today? I don't know. No way. Is this real? Let's fucking go. A Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover movie has been announced. Yeah. They. I mean, this was teased at the end of the last one. At Rise the end of, of the last Transformers? or Really? Yeah. Is this where I learned <laughs> that G.I. Joe and Transformers are in the same universe? Uh, yeah, it is. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's neat. Yeah, both Hasbro. They've been doing their thing. Didn't if know I'm that. being honest. It was the I... Monopoly movie? Oh, no, is that Hasbro? That's not Hasbro. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it is. Is Monopoly Hasbro? Right. Is that going to get crossed over there? Because they're making a Monopoly movie with Marvel Probably Robbie. not. Probably not. No. Damn. It's a... Drop the ball. Yeah. Were you about to shout out something from chat? I don't know what I'm doing anymore, bless. Fair enough. Baba Tunde at a DG writes in and says, uh, Tim, so Transformer 1 is animated, and a Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover is real, and Last Ronin is getting an R-rated movie. Hopefully it times out with the game. Are we in the right timeline? Honestly, I'm a little beside myself that all this stuff's happening. We're getting... I, did they drop the trailer for this Transformers 1? Because I've been keeping my eye on it, but we had an animated Transformers movie in theaters later mm -hmm. this year. Real excited about this. I'm hoping for a Spider-Verse. Anything less, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> okay, well, you're going to be disappointed. All I've seen is uh, this, like, title treatment. Okay. That's a very funny thing to say. But let's fucking go, man.
Listen, I, we got a new just, Deadpool movie coming out later this year. I'm hoping for The Godfather. Anything yeah. less? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, dude, if they could do that for <laughs> Spider-Man, they could do it for Transformers. Transformers has such great characters and shit. And I, all they need to do, no humans. No fucking human. And I don't think we're getting a human in this movie. We're in, the, we're in the world of, we got that latest TMNT movie. We got exactly. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Uh-huh. Animated movies are on one. And they are. Transformers uh, needs a good one. We got one Another more one. from Jamie Simmons who says, Spider-Man 2 and God of War had review embargoes a week in advance. Rise of Ronin and Stellar Blade have embargoes at the moment or very close to the NZ release. Why? I, you lost me in the second half of that ride, and I'm sorry. Rise of the Ronin, Stellar Beast, sorry, Stellar Blade have embargoes at the moment. Or very close to the NZ release. NZ. New Zealand? New Zealand. New Zealand. I don't know what you're asking, but cool. <laughs> I would also say that like you're comparing two games. <laughs> I really don't know what you're asking me. <laughs> I think they're trying to make a statement of like, hey, these uh, these two games got embargo. Uh, the review embargoes were like a week before, but these other two da- uh, games... Uh, their embargoes are closely uh, closer to like the release. When was the uh, rise of the, game. of the Ronin review? And also, do we know, know when the remember. Stellar Blade? I don't, I don't think we know, know the Stellar Blade I don't know where thing. they're pulling Stellar Blade out of, but I imagine Rise of the Ronin. But also, really quick, two of those games that you gave previous examples for are uh, from first party studios, and the other two games are not. So it's I think different. that is the difference there. Yeah, but they're all PlayStation Studios games. But also, you're right. It's different. We have breaking news, everybody. What's that? Sonic Three has been talked about at CinemaCon. Mm. They showed footage. We cannot watch the footage, but I can tell you what happened in the footage. Uh-huh. Plus, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles fighting Shadow, who's riding a motorbike. Let's fucking go. Dr. Robot- Robotnik is fat now. Let's f- Wait, he's and back? He's back, baby. What the fuck? <laughs> New York City's the location. Okay. That's all we got. No shadow casting revealed. God, man. We're living, That's a lot of information. We're living good lives, everybody. How is Dr. Robotnik back? Is it Hayden Christensen? Later, haters. I thought I thought Jim Carrey was done. No, they you know? announced that he was coming back. Yeah, he was like, I, I got to get back. He's like, I, 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 I unretired. He knows what he needs to unretire Sonic for. Is important. Yeah, I get that. That's crazy. That's like, damn. <laughs> That's awesome. It was like Dr. Dre releasing um, uh, Detox. He's like, I think I like. I feel like Dr. Dre is gonna come out the woodworks. Like when he's challenged, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like when he's like when I find when I find a worthy like adversary or something. That's something that brings me out <laughs> the fucking dungeon. Then I'll drop it. I feel like that's Jim Carrey when he heard that they're making Sonic Three with Shadow. He's like, I gotta get in there. I gotta get in there. I, gotta I can't miss there. this. It's the year of Shadow. Bless. It's the year of Shadow. We, we better celebrate right. Uh, Transformers footage was shown. Uh, it's a group adventure with Optimus, Megatron, Bumblebee, and Alita. 3D animation, beautiful visuals. Love this. Uh, the group gained the ability to finally transform. So at Transformers 1, it is a, a, a early prequel. Doesn't sound like any fucking humans. Wait. Off to a good start here. Did they not trans... Wait, wait, wait. Trans- the last Transformers, did they not transform? This is the, the, the animated one coming this year. Gotcha. Standalone universe. Okay. Um, Optimus and Megatron are really good friends. So pre-Civil War. Uh, and mm. here you go, Bless. Like this is the bomb class. I'm dropping on you. <laughs> It's going to take time getting used to Hemsworth as Optimus. What the fuck? I don't know how I feel about that. Wait, Hemsworth? Which has Hemsworth? Holy shit. You're asking great questions. Yeah. I imagine it's Are we Chris. talking about Thor? <laughs> but I'm making assumptions here. All right. Cool. All right. That's a lot of news. Uh, time for kindoffunny.com. So I'm still thinking about the question that they asked that I, I couldn't understand. <laughs> I don't know. But good luck down there in New Zealand, I guess. I don't know. We see Robotnik <laughs> recruiting Shadow cool it's fucking awesome that's pretty cool dude. uh can you imagine the the unseriousness that is jim carrey's dr robotnik recruiting shadow the hedgehog <sighs> i can't wait this would be the most odd vibes I <laughs> like can't the most wait. odd humor it's been goofiness play. mixed with like fucking i don't know they're gonna get um hayden christensen as as shadow, shadow. it's just weird a weird clash of vibes oh, it's gonna be perfect and i'm here for it that's sonic that is Sonic. Uh, you're wrong. We write, write and let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Uh, Corey Clark says, shortly after SGF last year, Todd Howard says Elder Scrolls 6 might be his last. There you go. There you go. There you go. A little clue. A little clue. Um, and then for AB Productions, it's wrote in with all the things that we're talking about. That's it for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tim, this has been another episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. Mm-hmm. For each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news and you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and on podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do, support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free. Watch us record them live and get a daily exclusive show. Until next time, Game Daily. <laughs>